Jason. If you're standing here now, it means that not only have you succeeded in receiving all of my gifts, but have done so beyond the boundaries that I have set. I guess that means that I have succeeded as well. What I could not accomplish in life, I, I've done in death. As long as you are still alive, I will be too. I love you, son. Goodbye, Jason. Are we on yet? Give me a level, Jason. Testing, one, two, three. I'm Jason Stevens. Can we get this thing rolling? Mr. Stevens has meetings backed up all day. Quiet, please. Whenever you're ready. Hi, I'm Jason Stevens, director of Stevens Foundation. For the last two years... You seem about a million miles away, Lexi girl. Mm. Trying to figure out what my next move is. Well, have you told Mr. Billionaire Boyfriend about your Haiti plans? Not yet. <laughs> I don't know. It's a big decision. Just not sure how he's going to react. Alexia, well, it seems you have something to react to. You're being paid to the nurse's station. For what? Don't worry about what for. Just go. Okay, I'm here. What's the emergency? Is that Miss Hastings back there? <laughs> Alexia Drummond, you have been summoned to a night out on the town by a Mr. Jason... Stevens? Stevens. Yes, yes. Your uh, wardrobe will be provided. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's beautiful. This is something I need to say that I should have said a long time ago. The past two years when I first saw you in Italy. I can't get your face. You have a beautiful face. I find your eyes. Your smile. Say, I should have said a long time ago. Miss Drummond, I hope you have a wonderful evening. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. <laughs> wow. Wow, yourself. Tonight's menu, spinach salad with mangoes and chutney. Then the main course, steamed broccoli with lobster, specially flown in from Maine, with lemon and drawn butter. And ice cream sandwiches for dessert. <laughs> oh, you picked all my favorites. Oh. To us. Jason, thank you. I love my dress, and you've made me feel so special. But you know you don't have to. Play our song? something I need to say that I should have said a long time ago. Not a day passes, I don't 
think about your beautiful face and your eyes and your smile. You're so sweet. Jason, there's something I need to talk to you about. It's important. Uh, I was gonna... Let me finish, please. Alexia, you're my heart. I can't imagine life without you and I. Jason. Jason Stevens? Yes? You've been served. Have a nice evening. Mr. Stevens, I'm so sorry. I don't know how he got past me. That's perfect. Just perfect. What is it? My family. Aunts, uncles, the whole greedy bunch of them suing me for breaching fiduciary trust and the handling of Red's foundation. I'm really sorry, Lex. I wanted tonight to... I just, I had to deal with this. Please have the limo take Miss Drummond home. So, uh, Mr. Stevens, if the court were to find evidence to support your claims, what are you proposing to be done? Your Honor, on behalf of my brother, my sister, and the rest of the heirs of Red Stevens, we request that Jason be removed as director of the foundation. And who are you suggesting would replace him? Me, Your Honor. Why, Uncle Bill, you, you don't have enough money? My grandfather wanted me to have the foundation because he knew his own children couldn't be trusted. And that just goes to show just how far gone he was at the end. That he left a billion dollar foundation in the hands of this spoiled, no good party boy who, who wants absolutely nothing to do with his own family. Okay, that's enough of that. Both of you sit down. I'm taking the plaintiff's discovery into chambers and we'll reconvene tomorrow at 10 to determine whether we're going to trial. Case adjourned. Dr. Luson, good to see your face. Um, I had a few questions for you. Hi. Afternoon, Ms. Drummond. Oh, hi. Um, I just wanted to see if I could get a moment with Mr. Stevens. I don't know. Mr. Hamilton said no interruptions. I'm interrupting. Hi. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I know you're really busy. Yeah, no, Hamilton just wants us to get all of our ducks in a row for the hearing tomorrow with the vultures. So. Uh, I just needed to. I needed to. Uh, I'm just going to say it. There's this clinic in Haiti, and they work with kids who have cancer. It sounds terrific. It's definitely a project that we could take on. Why don't you put together some sort of proposal? Oh. And once I'm through with the stupid lawsuit, then no, it's not we can do some great things. That's not what I meant. I didn't come here to pitch you for money. I already made plans to go down there. They really need experienced nurses, and I just thought that Even I better. Could help in some way. Once I get past this, we can both jet down there and we Mr. can. Mr. Stevens, I apologize, but Mr. Hamilton says we can't continue prepping without you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> really sorry, Lex. I got it. I know. Um, just whenever you have a sec. Yeah, sure.
Jason? Oh, what is it? She's gone, Hamilton. Who's gone? Alexi. Six months in Haiti. Why would she do this? I'm sure she didn't just, on a whim, decide to move to Haiti. But somehow, you're just finding out about it now. Yeah, well, if you've not noticed, I've been a little busy at the foundation. I haven't had a lot of me time lately. Or we time either, I gather. Jason, your grandfather had high expectations when he left the entire state to you. And I guess I pushed you a little too hard also. The 12 gifts that Red taught you, any idea where they came from? No. Well, you're about to find out. See the box over there? Take a look in there. There's a book. Only two people in the world knew that uh, your grandfather kept the journal from the time he was 15. One was me, and the other was your grandmother. Maybe you can find uh, something from his past to help you here in the present, or possibly in your future. I'm going to go back to bed now. We got court in the morning. You're welcome to stay tonight. <laughs> That's quite a story. February 1941. My ninth grade teacher, Mrs. Halpern, gave me this book full of blank pages. She said it might help to put my ideas on paper. Sounds a little girly to me, but she said that's a diary. Boys keep journals. There's a difference. September 3rd, 1941. Someday I swear to heaven I'm going to be a billionaire. February 23rd, 1941. Finally quit school and got me my own job today, delivering ice. From sun up till sundown. Smoke! You're blocking the driveway! Come on! Let's go! rich kid did me a favor today because I might not have ever seen that newspaper on the ground. It was right there in print. This man, Andrew Carnegie, had started out working in a telegraph office at 12. He didn't even go to school, just read books whenever he could, just like me. But he had to put up with all those rich kids turning up their noses at him, too. And he ended up a billionaire anyway. I swear to heaven, and to every one of those snobs who look down on me. So will I.
soup's getting cold. It would be nice to have something else for a change. There. Now you got something else? Sounds bad again, Pop. I know. She needs her medicine. What am I gonna do, huh? I can't afford it right now. Hospital's still after me for last time she was there. Yeah, well, someday I'm gonna buy that whole darn hospital. And they wish they treated her better, I swear to heaven. What are you babbling about? I'm gonna be a billionaire. Like this man, Andrew Carney. Get in your head, son. You ain't ever gonna be rich. Only thing you're ever gonna be able to count on is coming up on the shore again. That's what was handed me by my daddy, and I'm sorry, but that's all you're ever gonna get from me. Some rest, okay? September 4th, 1941. I'm leaving home today. I don't know for how long, but it's one less mouth to feed, and maybe Mama can get her medicine now. No matter what Daddy says, I don't accept to be in poor as my destiny. I know my fortune's out there somewhere, and the next time he sees me, I'll be a rich man.
I'm uh, making my golden list. Your what? My golden list. Something my mom taught me. Every day, rain or shine, I make a list of ten things that I'm grateful to God. For. Things you're grateful for. Ten, right? I got lots of things to be grateful for. Everybody got at least ten things to be grateful for. I got nothing. You sure about that? Sure as I could be. You got your health, right? I'll be grateful someday. No, no. You gotta be grateful now. You gotta be grateful for the little things in life. Otherwise, you'll never be grateful for nothing. You know what? Come on, we gotta get off the train before we hit the yard. Now you really got something to be grateful for. We in Texas. Wait! Ah. Morning, fellas. Morning. 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 Name's Jacob Early. Looking for six strong backs, put up some cattle fence. Mustache. Hold a guy. I'm going to slip. I don't think so. Mister, hey, I'm your man. I can carry 50 pounds of ice up three stories. <laughs> That's all right, young man. That's all right. I enjoy a Negro beaver. Come on. Well, you've obviously put up a few posts. Yes, sir. You two, climb in. Young and strong. That's six. Let's go, fellas. Good-looking post there, Slick. Thanks. Think it'll hold up to 2,000 pounds of heifer leaning against it? It'll hold. Maybe Mr. Early can have you build my rabbit fence next. Got another one for you. Water up, Slick. It's gonna lay you out flat if you're not careful. Don't worry. I didn't spit in it. I wasn't worried, but I am now. You can trust me. Uh, ooh. That's good work. Another week, you might catch up with the rest of us. <laughs> Just yanking your chain, Slick. By the way, name's not Slick. It's Red. Red Stevens. Gus Caldwell. Girls call me stud. I'm gonna stick with Gus. <sighs> Seem to know your way around a ranch. <sighs> Boy, howdy. My whole life. Till two years ago. What happened? Stinking depression. 
Bank foreclosed on us. Now my dad is stuck working other men's ranches, trying to make ends meet. Me too. Had to quit school, but at least I'm doing something. My daddy shovels coal back in Baton Rouge when there's work. So I know what it means to be on the short end. Someday, I'm gonna have me my own ranch. And it'll be bigger than this one. Then I'm gonna take over the bank. Yeah? Whatever I do, it's gonna be big. Cause I ain't stopping till I'm a billionaire. That's a big number. Better plan on a different career than ranching then. You ought to head out to California. They got plenty of jobs out there. Hey, maybe you could get into the movies. I hear the Three Stooges are looking for a fourth one. Oh, man. <laughs> Any up, gents. Five card stud, like me. <laughs> you better give me something I can work with this time, kid. <laughs> Your hind porch back to nursery school. September 6, 1941. <laughs> Working for my supper and a few bucks is just surviving. I don't want to end up like the fat man or the old guy digging holes when I'm their age. They should be raking in the money as their own bosses by now. He's got what? <sighs> well, so quick to the punch. Come on, Red, where are you going? There's too many old guys at this table. <laughs> hey, Red. What can I do for you? Mr. Early? I'd like to know how I can be you. Be me. I want to know everything I can about how to be successful, just like you are. I want, I want to know how to get what you have. Have a seat. Success. Hmm. Well, success takes a lot of things, son. A lot of things working together. I guess you don't want to be a sheep. You want to be the bellwether. The bellwether. A leader, son. A leader of men. To make things successful for yourself. If I get that fence finished today early, does that save you any money? Sure. Well, on feed, yeah, you bet. You split those savings with me, I'll have that fence finished by tomorrow. <laughs> I do like you, son, but it ain't gonna happen. We'll see. Where's Red? His bed's made. Little son of a gun. Better not have quit on us. Only got two days left to finish that fence. What the heck, Red? You pushed this fence another 100 yards since yesterday. When'd you come out here? Three. Three what? Three in the morning. Why? Why not? Sooner we get this fence done, sooner we get paid. Yeah, but why would we want to cut off another day of work? Boss ain't paying us by the day. He's paying us by the finished fence. Now, I figure if we work in two groups of three, we can move even faster. One man measures and digs, the next man places the post, the third buries it, they place the wire, and they move on to the next hole that's already been dug. Like an assembly line. All right? Let's go! Guy, you are. Thank, Thank you, you very much. There you go. 
Thank you very much. There you are. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. And a little extra here. Thank you very much. I've never seen this much money in one place in my life. You were the bellwether, kid. And you came in a day early. Didn't think it could be done. Thank you. You bet. Now, if you're still around these parts uh, a month or so, stop by. I might have a job to give you. I don't begrudge you making some extra money, but that's the last time you'll ever one-up me, Slick. Juice a hamburger, medium rare, pack it up, you go. Coming right up, Mr. Westcott. I'm gonna catch flies with your trap open like that, kid. Sorry, I didn't mean to stare, sir. I've never seen a belt buckle like that before. Had it custom made. Looks expensive. Oh, you can make sure of it. I'm headed to California to seek my fortune. California? What do you wanna go all the way out there for? More money here in Texas. Just cow pasture, as far as I can see. Just not looking deep enough. Trust me, there's more of it in Texas than God knows what to do with. That'll be three fifty, Mr. Westcott. You're talking about oil, aren't Keep you? Change, Mr. Dollar. Buy yourself something. Go with that pretty face. Goodness. Thank you, Mr. Westcott. Am I right? It's oil. There's a teen dance over at the Tyler High School gym. You're a teen, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so well. Directions are on the flyer. Hope to see you there. Okay, bye. <laughs> Come on, doll. It's our song. <laughs> hey, Gus. 
I think this new man was here first. You did want to ask me to dance, right? You. You're like toe fungus, kid. Just when I thought I got rid of you, you show up again. All right. All right, everybody. Grab your partner because it is time to tag dance. Come here, cutie. Oh, don't thanks. So Listen, if you want to dance with her, follow me. Which partner? Hi. Oh. <laughs> That's good. An actual word. Thought I'd try to lead with something real simple to help you out. Not always so tongue tied. I'm not sure whether I should take that as a compliment or criticism. Compliment. Definitely compliment. <laughs> Switch partner. <laughs> Baton Rouge. So, what do you think of Tyler, Texas? I didn't like it at first. Now it's starting to grow on you? I think I want to marry you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not tongue-tied anymore. <laughs> I'm red. Yes, you are. What? Oh, no, 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 my name. My name is Red. Red Stevens. Well, Red Stevens. My name is Hannah Roberts. September 8th, 1941. Hannah. What a girl. I feel paralyzed around her. It's like my mouth has a mind of its own. Maybe I'll give Tyler Texas one more chance before I move on. Red? What are you doing here? I was hoping I could walk you home. Come on, Hannah. Just a second. Red, I'm flattered. I had a really nice time at the dance. But I don't think my dad would let me get serious with a boy who doesn't go to school. I was in school, back home, but I don't need school to make my fortune. About done there, Hayseed. We gotta go. Hey, learn some manners, Ace. Eh? Someday this Hayseed's gonna be a billionaire. Hannah, we gotta go. Maybe Daddy Warbucks there can drive you home in his limousine. Fine, just go already. Red, a billionaire? So, you think you can be like Andrew Carnegie and Make a billion dollars and not have to go to school? Yeah, something like that. OK, I'll let you walk me home. But I want you to meet someone first. <laughs> Is that a diary? Girls have diaries. It's a journal. Mm, journal, then. <laughs> Write anything in there about me after the dance last night? Maybe. <laughs> but he could take the freshman exam and then be in my class, couldn't he? Hang on a sec. I didn't, I didn't say I want to do that. In theory, yes. But that's a tall order for someone who didn't finish the ninth grade. I could take that test and pass if I wanted to, but there's been plenty of self-made men who didn't finish school. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, Benjamin Franklin, Andrew Carnegie. They were all self-educated. They did pretty good on their own. You have ambition, Red, but a proper education is important for your future. Now, we have a janitor's room. A janitor's room? It's not being used. You can stay there. Give me a number, at least five digits in a multiplier. Um, 
56,679 times 61. 4,457,419. Now, as for science, I see you have a little eczema on your hand there. That's a ficus. Also known as ficus benjamina, the leaves produce an allergen which can cause scratchy eyes, the sniffles, and even eczema. You're educated. You make, what, 1700 a year? In this little nowhere Texas town. I'm sorry, sir. I want more. I've made up my mind. There's nothing more to talk about. I just think school's a waste of time. Why do you have such a chip on your shoulder? A chip? It's like you're afraid or something. You don't know nothing about me. You're right. I don't. But I do know that everybody in this world needs somebody to believe in them. I would have believed in you, Red. Down, please. Quiet down, please. Ryan Hale, would you please find your seat? Thank you. Now, I would like to introduce you to your newest classmate. Red Stevens, would you stand, please? Thank you, Red. All right, open your textbooks to page 57 and let's get started. Promising me, Red Stevens. Whatever you want. Fancy car, big house, bigger ring. What if I say I just want you? 
turning red again. <laughs> yes, red. You're red. Turn the radio on. The Japanese attack Pearl Harbor. This means war. Special news bulletin. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, by air. President Roosevelt has just announced. The attack also was made on all naval and military activities on the principal island of Oahu. We take you now to Washington. A Japanese attack upon Pearl Harbor naturally would mean war. I didn't even Such know where Pearl Harbor was, or that the Hawaiian Islands belonged to us. But what I do know is when someone hits us, we hit back. I'm going to be a part of that. I have to. Gonna walk in circles all day or come see me? Hey. You know, there's something I need to. I'm not really sure how to tell you this, but. What? What is it? I signed up, Hannah. Signed up? Mm -hmm. For what? The Army. What? But I don't. You're 15. How could they let you? I convinced them I was 17. Oh, this is crazy. You're too young. Look, I don't care about that, okay? It's not fair all those other guys getting to go off and fight. Well, I'm, I'm stuck in this lousy little town listening to lectures about Emily. Who the heck cares Dickinson? Well, I'm not going to let you do this. I am going to go down there, and I'm going to tell them you that you're 15. Not. <sighs> How can I become my own man if I don't go? How can I ever be worthy of getting my share if I'm not willing to go fight for it? This is so selfish. Selfish? Look, you can say whatever you want, but I am going, and I leave tomorrow. Well, I won't wait for you. You hear me? Fine by me. There's a hundred other boys out there who want me, and I can have anyone I good, want. Good, good. They can have you for all I care. I want your promise ring anyway. Hey, good for you, you hear me? Get married. I don't need a girl anyway. Lieutenant! Yes, sir. I need a runner. You! Run this message over to Lieutenant Harris, 1st Platoon. 500 yards up over that tree line. Private, did you hear me? I got it, sir.
wish I could say nice to see you. Now I don't spoil the joy I'll feel as I watch you leave. over when this is all done <laughs> you, you still thinking about that ranch oh yeah sure you still thinking about oil it's about all i think of it. Red, we've gone down another 35 feet today. Sucker rod's completely dry. Could be another duster. I don't want to hear that. You keep that thought muzzled. But the last dozen years learn how to find other men oil, and it's my turn now. My gut says it's here. boys weren't planning on early supper because we're going down another 35 and we're gonna go down another 35 if we have to well that's it enough I quit I don't hire a man back when he quits on me we're running out of good men red we'll find more good men come on we're going another 35 Those rods down. You want to have a catch, Dad? Sorry, Billy boy, I can't today. Soon, I ain't gonna make payroll. 
let alone be able to afford to feed you guys. Oh, I keep hearing is my old man in the back of my head talking about once poor, always poor crap. You gotta let that go. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't. All the geology reports look right, and, and we hit the salt formation in the right depth. I just don't. Maybe Gus could help. No. He's already hit a few. No, I'm not gonna ask Gus for advice. There's nothing you can do about it right now. How about investing in us? What are you talking about? I know you think it's all about bank accounts and oil wells, but it's not. It's right out there. It's okay. It's all right. Come on, son. Toss it in here. Are you serious, Dad? Yeah, come on, kid. Fire it in. Keep your eye on it. Can you teach me how to throw a curve? I don't know how to throw a curve. Well, someone's got to know. What you call him? Yeah. An expert. Yeah. Can you find me one? Yeah, we could find you one of them. March 4th, 1955. Out of the mouth of babes, I went and found an expert. And from the looks of him, he couldn't throw a curveball to save his life. Are you sure that we're... So what are you listening to? Does shh not mean the same in Texas as it does in California? Sorry. Uh... We agreed on 3%, right? Yeah, 3%. Here. Here what? Drill here. Good 
job. Can you think of something else that adds up to ten? Good. I literally you did it. <laughs> Oh, red! Red! about that. We're up to 500 barrels a day, boss. 506 yesterday. Two bucks a barrel, that's a thousand a day on that well alone. According to college, boy, Reserve underneath this land is at least 50 million barrels. How fast can we drill and set up another dairy? About two weeks. Make it one to be a bonus. I want big, beautiful grasshoppers bobbing up and down as far as the eye can see. You got it, boss. What's this? That's him. That's him right there. That there's a delivered subpoena, Red Stevens. I got proof you've been cheating me out of my mineral rights on this land. I got a lawyer, so you better start to figure out my cut of this operation. Well, I hope you got a good lawyer. I got a better one. And he's gonna take you to school. I'll see you in court. Oh, I'll see you in court. Yeah, I'll be there, Red. Oh, I'll be there. I'll see you. I'll see you. So who's our lawyer, boss? Good question. Stevens, I got served a subpoena. I need a lawyer to meet me at the courthouse next Tuesday. You any good? I was in my class in Howard University School of Law. Editor of the Law Review, four years running. Would you like a list of uh, peer reviewed articles? Nope. Good enough. I'll see you next Tuesday at 10. What you gonna do? Represent yourself. <clears throat> Mr. 
Stevens? Mr. Hamilton. Yes, sir. Good to see you. Been a long time. How's your wife? Actually, she died not too long ago. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm not sure his kind is even allowed in this courthouse. <clears throat> Here's what they are claiming. How fast would you like this to be over? Real fast. The subpoena appears to be in order. Of course it's in order. What do you think I am, an amateur? Actually, sir, I have no idea what type of lawyer you are. Before you interrupted me, I was saying the subpoena is fine. The problem is the deed of trust. I took the liberty of pulling it from the county hall records. You know what I'd be asking you to be doing, and you know what to look for. Well, I looked up the subpoena, and that's public record, too. But don't worry about it. As I was saying, in pulling the records, I noticed that my client purchased the land and minimal rights from your client in a land swap more than two years ago. So, uh, maybe we should wait till the judge gets here before we uh... just answer the question. All right, if you if you insist. The deed was recorded exactly two years and two months ago. Texas law says that the statute of limitation and minimal rights dispute is two years. On the nose. Please tell me you knew that. Well, I, uh... Well, how could you let this happen? I told you. I'm a divorce lawyer. Come back here. You told me we, this was a sure thing. You said we'd get a settlement. Tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> Easy. I'll be. Mr. Hamlin, how would you like to work for me full time? My business is going through the roof, and I could use a good man like you around me. Oh, well, Mr. Stevens, I I'm on it. Uh, but I do have other clients. So. Yeah, okay, okay. Hey, we'll call it part time then. Everybody wins. Somehow everybody wins means you win first. Excellent. We understand each other. <clears throat> I guess so. What do you know about oil? Well, it's messy. Texas gold. you're telling me is there's a bigger deposit on Jason Acres. Yeah, at least 200 million barrels. And we can't get it? Wow. That's twice as much as on this patch. That's 600 million worth of crude. Why ain't this rancher selling? Really? I want this land. We have offered him triple the going rate. He, he just not selling. So why is he being stubborn? Because not everything is about money, Red. Well, that's a lie. Everything is about money. Not for this guy. Last name, Early. Jacob Early? Same family tree. Nephew Andy, the land has been passed down for five generations. Uh, cattle is, uh, is his legacy. Now, how come I didn't know about this? Oh, come on now, Red. All these years. And all the land deals, as long as the price was right, when did it ever matter who was selling as long as they sold? Tell me again about this horizontal drilling. Oh, yeah. Fuck, you never ask. Now. Now, they've tried it elsewhere with success, and I think I can make it work here. Theoretically, a well on our land could tap into a neighbor's reserve, provided, of course, that you own the mineral rights. What's the downside? It's new. 
It'll be expensive, but I think we can get the oil with minimal environmental damage to the cow pastures. How minimal? No idea, actually, but I just think that minimal is a more positive way to sell it. Jimmy, when I promoted you to acquisitions, you told me you'd get your mother to jump off a bridge. I want you to go see this Andy early and get this deal done. What if I can't convince her? I want this land. This is our next play. We get our hands on that refinery, we start competing with the big boys. We control both sides of the supply chain. Look, uh, it's risky, Brad. I mean, you heard the geologist. This new way of drilling is it's not going to come cheap. And I got to be honest with you. I don't think we could afford to leverage both deals at the same time. Well, Carnegie believed in investing in new technology, new facilities, hard driving, pushing the limits. We got to start thinking the same way, Hamilton. We develop new technology, it gives us an advantage. I just hope we're not soaring off a cliff, that's all. I'm not going round and round about this anymore. See what I can do. Red, it's almost Christmas, you know. I want this meeting with Carlton Strain. Now. Why aren't you eating, Ruth? I told Sylvia last week I don't eat meat. Since when? I saw you bacon two days ago. I said I don't eat meat. Well, these are vegetables, right? So you can have some of mine. Stop! I don't want your asparagus. You are so immature. I swear, it's the last time I come home for Christmas break. It's not too late. You can leave. You should grow up. You're, you're not even finished yet. I'm just tired. I'd rather be smoking cigs in his room. Hey, Dad. I'm uh, meeting the guys at the country club. Sure could use a few bills. What do you need? 40. Can you swap me some cash, too? I'm going to the arcade with some friends. Look what you started. There. Thanks. So, there are these really, really, really cute boots that I am dying for. Yeah? How much? Uh, oh, that'll do. Thanks so much. You're the best. They never see you. When they do, you just throw cash at them. I came home to repack. I got a meeting in Tulsa about the refinery. <clears throat> I should be home before Christmas. Gentlemen, have a seat. I know you wanted this meeting quickly, Mr. Stevens. Right before Christmas. Yep. But well, let's cut to the chase here. You want the Tulsa refinery. Yes, I do. And we trust that you uh, reviewed our proposal? I did. Does that mean you accepted it, or are we just sitting around here twiddling our thumbs for nothing? The question is whether or not I want to sell to you. 
It's that simple. Well, that's just ridiculous. You don't have another buyer. Fred. It's starting to tick me off. You're here because you want this deal. Some sort of race to grab all you can. Seems we both have needs, Mr. Stevens. And usually I need to meet the people I'm doing business with in order to make my determination. Problem is, you don't personally impress me. You're rude, self-serving, and greedy. I will consider your proposal, and I'll get back to you just as quickly as I can. All right. I expect to have your decision by tomorrow. That's it. Let's go. The deal is it. And right now, that's in my hands, not yours. We both know you're still trying to recover from that explosion at the plant 18 months ago. Red. Mm -mm. Took 11 lives. Your liability went sky high. And the publicity practically crippled you. Red. Your profits are down 22% from last quarter. Where did you get that information? <laughs> I want to buy your refinery. And you need to sell it. Well, it makes you needing me. And that. That just makes your blood boil. Let's go. See you later, Red. Christmas Eve, what kind of games are you playing? Red, do you consider me a friend? Of course I do. Well, as your friend, let's fly home tonight. Huh? Like you could be with Anna, with the kids, enjoy our Christmas. I told you I'm not leaving until I get that refinery. Look, you can wait till the cows come home, but I'm not missing Christmas with my family. Now, you could dock my pay, you could fire me, you could do whatever you want. I'm heading to the airport, and I'm taking the company plane home. And if you're smart, Red, you come with me. <sighs> you're right. You're right. Go home, go be with your family. I'll take a charter plane home.
Merry Christmas, Red. Merry Christmas, Hamlet. Read the do not disturb sign. Strang. You're going to invite me in, Stephen? Doctor signed. I actually made my decision last night. Put out a press release. Van Handel Oil is now the proud owner of its own refinery. You're welcome. Yeah. I'll be on my way then. Nice doing business with you, Stevens. I, I'm, I'm curious. Mr. Strang, why did you wait till Christmas to give me this news? Because I knew I could. How? Because you remind me of myself you know, 20 years ago. Mr. Stevens, you have a phone call. Yeah. Line five. It's Red Stevens. Hannah? What? Pilot! his mother's nursing home for Christmas Eve dinner. The trucker fell asleep and hit him head on. The doctor said he had severe internal damage. Both of his kidneys are ruptured. He's gonna lose them. If he survives, they're gonna put him on dialysis. But he'll go to the end of a very long waiting list for a kidney donor.
and a friend in need. We've wasted in someone else's shoes, empty expectations, everything to lose. Everything has come to pass, and sand inside the hourglass. Everything has come to pass, sand inside the hourglass. Oh, boss. No! Christmas Eve, you met the business end of a semi out on 205. What day is it? Happy New Year. Welcome to 1969. Hey, I thought... I thought you were in Tulsa. You needed some new plumbing. So I gave you some of mine. Uh, you know what? I think I need to go back to sleep. Maybe this could all be a bad dream. Starting off. Sorry, hope I didn't wake you. Uh, I'm just glad that I can wake up. <sighs> so, do we have a refinery? We do. I think that means you're a billionaire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does. How does that feel? Not a stitch different. I thought it would, though. I really did. All that time thinking about it and dreaming about it, and when it finally happened, it just happened. share it with you. Well, you did what you said you would. You should take pride in that, Red. I got all the money in the world. And I traded everything that was important to me for it. It's not too late, Red. What if it is, Hamlet? My kids are a mess. My wife thinks I'm lost. You could change that. You could change that, Red. You see, money's been your dream. But your legacy, your legacy is your family. 
Your fortune is your wife, your kids, and all the little Stevens that comes along. He still got time, Red. What's this all about, Dad? Yeah, is this gonna take long? Uh, are you guys getting divorced? No, that's not what this is about. Well, what are we here for? You're kind of freaking me out. That doesn't take much. Okay. All right, that's enough. Your father has something that he would like to say to you. So you will sit there with your mouths shut and listen. Go ahead, Red. <clears throat> I wanted you kids here because well, I want to apologize to you. Apologize? For what? For neglecting you over two decades. I made my work more important over you and more important over your mom. I learned a lot of lessons along the way. But I ended up burying him in the pursuit of the almighty dollar. Is there a bottom line here, Dad? I got a plane to catch back to Princeton. Your mom and I decided we're gonna start living life a little bit different. So, future profit from Panhandle Oil will go into a new fund that we started. We're going to start doing some good in the world. And we're going to stop living for ourselves. We're going to try to learn how to help others. Tell me you're not giving our trust funds away to the poor or something. I'm not giving your money away, son. In fact, your mother and I are going to give each of you $10,000 right now. For what? For the chance to learn the gift of giving. No strings attached. <clears throat> we, we hope that you'll use this money to help others. So are we done here? We can go? Yeah, y'all can go. All we can do is try and hope that their hearts change. It will take patience. Yeah. I've never been very patient. Dad? Yeah, Jay. Here you go. I don't need it. Put it in the foundation. You sure, son? This is your money. I have enough. Thank you. Thank you, son. My dad got it. Dad died. Red knew that I would get it too. That's right, Jason. The monetary inheritance that we accumulate to pass on to our children is not nearly as important as the personal legacy we pass on. I 
almost forgot we had the hearing at 10. Are you sure that's where you want to be this morning? That's where I had to be. No, I can deal with those hyenas in court. What you need to do is find a special someone who's going to help you pass your legacy up. I was hoping you could get me a job. I could empty the trash, and mop the floors. If, well, if there were floors, I'd mop them. Anything you need. What about the foundation? Decided to take a leave of absence for a few months. Maybe six. The place isn't gonna fall apart with Hamilton in charge. I tried to tell you. I wanted to tell you in person. I understand. I, I understand why you did it the way you did. It would have taken a bomb to get my attention, and I'm sorry for that. Forgive me for not putting you first in my life. I want to shut up and let you talk. I want to turn the cell off and just be with you. Help you with the things that are most important to you. But what if I'm not enough for you? I, I can't promise to be perfect. I know I'll fail from time to time, but I promise that I'll try as hard as I can. I realized something that took my grandpa a lot of hard knocks to learn. Life's greatest fortunes are the ones closest to you. You're my fortune, Lex. You're worth more to me than all the money in the world. And without you, I'm I'm a very poor man. So, I come to you as a poor man in need of a fortune that only you can give me. I don't want to ask you to do anything that you're not ready to do. But this very expensive ring in the little market down the street. <laughs> it's my promise that I'll never stop trying to be the man that you deserve and need. And my promise that I will wait as long as I have to for you to be my wife. and kiss her. young and healthy. What else? That you love me. 
<laughs> and what else? You want the whole list. I want the whole list. <laughs> I'm grateful that Emily brought us together. Me too. Maybe we can add a little Stevens to the list. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe someday soon. Maybe a couple of dogs. Yes. <laughs> yeah? And a house, a white picket fence. Mm hmm. Two stories. Two stories. Shutters on the windows. Shutters. Mm -hmm. Now I have a longer list than you. <laughs> <laughs>